dear, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in your live studios in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, next to the English Channel, otherwise known as The Haven. Srimad Bhagavad, I'm in a little late, so I'm going to go right into it. We hope you're all safe and sound, and welcome to all the new uh, listeners. They're gradually coming. They're not always there for the live readings, but uh, we're getting information that the number of followers are increasing. For your information, we're up to 2,840, which is substantial con considering the rareness of the subject matter. <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram by Srila Sanatana Goswami goes like this. Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya, Sarva Lokaika Drikprada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvandudita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, <clears throat> you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya. Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvadasava Sevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Shri Krishna Himself. Marekabando Matsangin Madguru man mahadana, man nistadaka mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chochatakada. Hanamun Chagadachin Mam Prem Narit Kanta Yokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hare Krishna So we've reached the fourth chapter, Transcendental Knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Krishna has just finished explaining to Arjuna all the different varieties of sacrifice that people make to try to purify themselves of material existence. We've reached uh, text 31, but I think I'm going to read 30 because it's in, it will give us continuity. Bhagavad Gita, as it is, chapter 4, verse 30. Sarve pyete yagyavido yagya chapatakama shaha Yagya Shishtamrita Bhujo Yanti Brahmasanatanam. All these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions and having tasted the nectar of the results of sacrifices, they advance toward the supreme eternal atmosphere. Purport. <coughs> From the foregoing explanation 
of different types of sacrifice, namely, sacrifice of one's possessions, study of the Vedas or philosophical doctrines, and performance of the yoga system. It is found that the common aim of all is to control the senses. Sense gratification is the root cause of material existence. Therefore, unless and until one is situated on a platform apart from sense gratification, there is no chance of being elevated to the eternal platform of bliss, full knowledge, full bliss, and full life. This platform, this platform is in the eternal atmosphere or Brahman atmosphere. <clears throat> All the above mentioned sacrifices help one to become cleansed of all sinful reactions of material existence. By this advancement in life, not only does one become happy and opulent in this life, but also in the end, at the end, he enters into the eternal kingdom of God, <clears throat> either merging into the impersonal Brahman or associating with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Guess which one we choose. Text 31. Nayam loko stajagyasya kutonyak kuru satama O best of the Kuru dynasty, without sacrifice, one can never live happily on this planet or in this life. What then of the next? Purport. Whatever form of material existence one is in, one is invariably ignorant of his real situation. In other words, existence in the material world is due to the multiple reactions to our sinful lives. Ignorance is the cause of sinful life, and sinful life is the cause of one's dragging on in material existence. The human form of life is the only loophole by which, we may, by which one may get out of this entanglement. The Vedas, therefore, give us a chance for escape by pointing out the paths of religion, economic comfort, regulated sense gratification, and at last, the means to get out of the miserable condition entirely. The path of religion, or the different kinds of sacrifice recommended above, automatically solves our economic problems. By performance of yajna, we can have enough food, enough milk, and so on, even if there is a so-called increase of population. When the body is fully supplied, naturally, the next stage is to satisfy the senses. The Vedas prescribe, therefore, sacred marriage for regulated sense gratification. Thereby, one is gradually elevated to the platform of release from material bondage. And the highest perfection of liberated life is to associate with the Supreme Lord. Perfection is achieved by performance of yajna, sacrifice, as described above. Now, if a person is not inclined to perform yajna according to the Vedas, how can he expect a happy life, even in this body, and what to speak of another body on another planet? There are different grades of material comforts in different heavenly planets, and in all cases there is immense happiness for persons engaged in different kinds of yajna. But the highest kind of happiness that a man can but the highest kind of happiness that a man can achieve is to be promoted to the spiritual planets by practice of Krishna consciousness. A life of Krishna consciousness is therefore the solution to all the problems of material existence. Text thirty two. Evam Bahuvida yajna vitata brahmano muke 
karmajan viditan sarvan evam gyatva mimokshase. All these different types of sacrifices are approved by the Vedas, and all of them are born of different types of work. Knowing them as such, you will become liberated. Different purport. <clears throat> different types of sacrifice, as discussed above, are mentioned in the Vedas to suit the different types of worker. Because men are so deeply absorbed in the bodily concept, these sacrifices are so arranged so that one can work either with the body, with the mind, or with the intelligence. But all of them are recommended for ultimately bringing about liberation from the body. This is confirmed by the Lord herewith from His own mouth. Text 33 Shriyan dravyamayad yajyaj jnana yajya padantapa sarvam karma kilam partha jnane parisimapyate O chastiser of the enemy, the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the sacrifice, than the mere sacrifice of material possessions. After all, O son of Prita, all sacrifices of work culminate in transcendental knowledge. Purport The purpose of all sacrifices is to arrive at the status of complete knowledge, then to gain release from material miseries, and ultimately to engage in loving transcendental service to the Supreme Lord, Krishna Consciousness. Nonetheless, there is a mystery about all these different activities of sacrifice, and one should know this mystery. Sacrifices sometimes take different forms according to the particular faith of the performer. When one's faith reaches the stage of transcendental knowledge, the performer of sacrifices should be considered more advanced than those who simply sacrifice material possessions without such knowledge. For without attainment of knowledge, sacrifices remain on the material platform and bestow no spiritual benefit. Real knowledge culminates in Krishna consciousness, the highest stage of transcendental knowledge. Without the elevation of knowledge, sacrifices are simply material activities. When, however, they are elevated to the level of transcendental knowledge, all such activities enter onto the spiritual platform. Depending on differences in consciousness, sacrificial activities are sometimes called karmakanda, fruitive activities, and sometimes jnanakanda, knowledge in pursuit of truth. It is better when the end is knowledge. Text, text 34. <clears throat> Tadvidi pranipatena pari prashne naseveya upatik shanti te jnanam jnaninas tatvadarshinaha <clears throat> Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. Purport The path of spiritual realization is undoubtedly difficult. The Lord therefore advises us to approach a bona fide spiritual master in the line of disciplic succession from the Lord Himself. No one can be a bona fide spiritual master without following this principle of disciplic succession. The Lord is the original spiritual master, and a person in the disciplic succession can convey the message of the Lord as it is 
to his disciple. No one can be spiritually realized by manufacturing his own process, as is the fashion of the foolish pretenders. The Bhagavatam 6.3.19 says, Dharmang tu sakshad bhagavat pranitam. The path of religion is directly enunciated by the Lord. Therefore, mental speculation or dry arguments cannot help lead one to the right path. Nor by independent study of books of knowledge can one progress in spiritual life. One has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge. Such a spiritual master, like a menial, such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender, and one should serve the spiritual master like a menial servant, without false prestige. Satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. Inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission and service, inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective. One must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master, and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. In this verse, both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned. No one should hear, not only should one hear submissively from the spiritual master, but one must get a clear, one must also get a clear understanding from him. In submission and service and inquiries, a bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind toward the disciple. Therefore, when the disciple is submissive and is always ready to render service, the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect. Text 35 Yaj gyat ma na punar moham evam yasya si pandava yena bhutan yasheshani drakshas yat manyatomayi Having obtained real knowledge from a self-realized soul, you will never fall again into such illusion. For by this knowledge, one will see that all living beings are but part of the Supreme, or in other words, that they are mine. Purport The result of receiving knowledge from a self-realized soul, or one who knows things as they are, is learning that all, the li that all living beings are parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. The sense of an existence separate from Krishna is called maya, ma, not, ya, this. Some think that we have nothing to do with Krishna, that Krishna is only a great historical personality, and that the Absolute is the impersonal Brahman. Factually, as, a state, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, this impersonal Brahman is the personal effulgence of Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the cause of everything. In the Brahma Sangita, it is clearly stated that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes. Even the millions of incarnations are only His different expansions. Similarly, the living entities are also expansions of Krishna. The Mayavadi philosophers wrongly think that Krishna loses His own separate existence in his many expansions. This thought is material in nature. We have experience in the material world that a thing 
when fragmentally distributed, loses its own original identity. But the Mayavadi philosophers failed to understand that absolute means that one plus one is equal to one and that one minus one is also equal to one. This is the case in the absolute world. For want of sufficient knowledge in the absolute science, we are now covered with illusion and therefore we think that we are separate from Krishna. Although we are separated parts of Krishna, we are none, nevertheless not different from Him. The bodily difference of the living entities is maya, or not actual fact. We are all meant to satisfy Krishna. By maya alone, Arjuna thought that the temporary bodily relationship with his kinsmen was more important than his eternal spiritual relationship with Krishna. The whole teaching of the Gita is targeted toward this end, that a living being, as Krishna's eternal servitor, cannot be separated from Krishna, and his sense of being an identity apart from Krishna is called Maya. The living entities, as separated parts and parcels of the Supreme, have a purpose to fulfill. Having forgotten that purpose since time immemorial, they are situated in different bodies as men, animals, demigods, and so on. Such bodily differences arise from forgetfulness of the transcendental service of the Lord. But when one is engaged in transcendental service through Krishna consciousness, one becomes at once liberated from this illusion. One can acquire such pure knowledge only from the bona fide spiritual master and thereby avoid the delusion that the living entity is equal to Krishna. Perfect knowledge is that the supreme soul, Krishna, is the supreme shelter for all living entities. And giving up such shelter, the living entities are deluded by the material energy, imagining themselves to have a separate identity. Thus, under different standards of material identity, they become forgetful of Krishna. When, however, such deluded living entities become situated in Krishna consciousness, it is to be understood that they are on the path of liberation. As confirmed in the Bhagavatam, 2.10.6 Muktir hit manyata rupam sarupena vyabastitihi Liberation means to be situated in one's constitutional position as an eternal servitor of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Text 36 Apichet asi pape byak sarve byak papa krita maha sarvam yana palavenaiva rijinam sancharishasi. Even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. Hare Krishna, dear Krishna. Purport Proper understanding of one's constitutional position in relationship to Krishna is so nice that it can at once lift one from the struggle of existence which goes on in the ocean of nations. This material world is sometimes regarded as an ocean of nations and sometimes as a blazing fire, forest fire, a blazing forest. In the ocean, however expert a, simmer, a swimmer one may be, the struggle for existence is very severe. If someone comes forward and lifts the struggling swimmer from the ocean, he is the greatest savior. Perfect knowledge 
received from the spirit from the supreme personality of Godhead is the path of liberation. The boat of Christian consciousness is very simple, but at the same time the most sublime. Text thirty seven. Yatai dang si samidog nir basmasat kuru ter juna yanagni sarvakarmani basmasat kuru te tata. As a blazing fire turns fire firewood to ashes, O Arjuna, so does the fire of knowledge burn to ashes all reactions to material activities. Purport. Perfect knowledge of self and super-self and of their relationship is compared herein to fire. This fire not only burns up all reactions to impious activities, but also all reactions to pious activities, turning them into ashes. There are many stages of reaction. Reaction in the making, reaction fructifying, reaction already achieved and reaction a priori. But knowledge of the constitutional position of the living entity burns everything to ashes. When one is in complete knowledge, all reactions, both a priori and posteriori, are consumed. In the Vedas, Vriyat Aranyaka Upanishad, 4.4.22 It is stated Ube Uhai Ube Uhai Mayaishe Etirat Yamritak Sad Basaduni One overcomes both the pious and impious reactions of work. Text 38 Nahi Jnanena Sadrisham Pavitram ihavidyate tatsvayang yogasang siddha kalinat manivindati. In this world, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Such knowledge is the mature fruit of all mysticism, and one, who's, one who has become accomplished in the practice of devotional service enjoys this knowledge within himself in due course of time. Purport When we speak of transcendental knowledge, we do so in terms of spiritual understanding. As such, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Ignorance is the cause of our bondage and knowledge is the cause of our liberation. This knowledge is the mature fruit of devotional service. And when one is situated in transcendental knowledge, he need not search for peace elsewhere, for he enjoys peace within himself. In other words, this knowledge and peace culminate in Krishna consciousness. This is the last word in Bhagavad Gita. This is the last word in the Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> Text 39 Shadhava labate jnanam tatpadak samyatendriyaha jnanam labdva param shantim achidenadi gachtati A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge and having achieved it he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Purport Such knowledge in Krishna consciousness can be achieved by a faithful person who believes firmly in Krishna one is called a faithful man who thinks that simply by acting in Krishna consciousness he can attain, he can attain the highest perfection. 
This faith is attained by the discharge of devotional service and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, which cleanses one's heart of all material dirt. Over and above this, one should control the senses. A person who is faithful to Krishna and who controls the senses can easily re attain perfection in the knowledge of Krishna consciousness without delay. Text 40 Agyas cha shirinanas cha sangchayatma vinashyati nayam lokosti naparo nasukam sangchayatmanaha But ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down. For the doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. Purport Out of the many standard and authoritative revealed scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita is the best. Persons who are almost like animals have no faith in or knowledge of the standard revealed scriptures and some, even though they have knowledge of or can cite passages from the revealed scriptures, have actually no faith in these words. And even though others may have faith in scriptures, like Bhagavad Gita, they do not believe in or worship the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Such persons cannot have any standing in Krishna consciousness. They fall down. Out of all the above-mentioned persons, those who have no faith and are always doubtful make no progress at all. Men without faith in God and His revealed Word find no good in this world nor in the next. For them there is no happiness whatsoever. One should therefore follow the principles of revealed scriptures with faith and thereby be raised to the platform of knowledge. Only this knowledge will help one become promoted to the transcendental platform of spiritual understanding. In other words, doubtful persons have no status whatsoever in spiritual emancipation. One should therefore follow in the footsteps of great acharyas who are in the disciplic succession and thereby success. Text 41 Yoga sanyasta karmanam jnana sanchina sangshayam atmavantam na karmani nibadnanti dananjaya One who acts in devotional service renouncing the fruits of his actions and whose doubts have been destroyed by transcendental knowledge is situated factually in the self. Thus, he is not bound by the reactions of work, O conqueror of riches. Purport One who follows the instruction of the Bhagavad Gita as it is imparted by the Lord, the personality of Godhead himself, becomes free from all doubts by the grace of transcendental knowledge. He, as a part and parcel of the Lord, in full Krishna consciousness, is already established in self-knowledge. As such, he is undoubtedly above bondage to reaction. Text 42 Tasmat agyanasam bhutam ritstam jnanastyatmanaha Again, tasmat agyanasam bhutang ritstang jnanasinatmanaha chatvainam sangshayam yogam atishto tishtabharata. Therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed 
by the weapon of knowledge. Armed with yoga, O Bharat, stand and fight. Purport The yoga system instructed in this chapter is called Sanatana Yoga, or eternal activities performed by the living entity. This yoga has two divisions of sacrificial actions. One is called sacrifice of one's material possessions, and the other is called knowledge of self, which is pure spiritual activity. If, satisf if sacrifice of one's material possessions is not dovetailed for spiritual realization, then such sacrifice becomes material. But one who performs such sacrifices with a spiritual objective or in devotional service makes a perfect sacrifice. When we come to spiritual activities, we find that there are that these are also divided into two, namely, understanding of one's own self or one's constitutional position, and the truth regarding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One who follows the path of Bhagavad Gita as it is can very easily understand that these two important divisions of not can, can very easily understand these two important divisions of spiritual knowledge. For him there is no difficulty in obtaining perfect knowledge of the self as part and parcel of the Lord. And such understanding is beneficial, for such a person can easily understand the transcendental activities of the Lord. In the beginning of this chapter, the transcendental activities of the Lord were discussed by the Supreme Lord Himself. One who does not understand <clears throat> the instructions of the Gita is faithless and is to be considered to be misusing the fragmental independence awarded to him by the Lord. In spite of such instructions, one who does not understand the real nature of the Lord as the eternal, blissful, all-knowing personality of Godhead is certainly fool number one. Ignorance can be removed by gradual acceptance of the principles of Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is awakened by different types of sacrifices to the demigods, sacrifice to Brahman, sacrifice in celibacy, in household life, in controlling the senses, in practicing mystic yoga, in penance, in foregoing material possessions, in studying the Vedas, and in partaking of the social institution called Varnashram Dharma. All of these are known as sacrifice, and all of them are based on regulated action. But within all these activities, the important factor is self-realization. One who seeks that objective is the real student of Bhagavad Gita, but one who doubts the authority of Krishna falls back. One is therefore advised to study Bhagavad Gita or any other scripture under a bona fide spiritual master with service and surrender. A bona fide spiritual master is in the disciplic succession from time eternal and he does not deviate at all from the instructions of the Supreme Lord as they were imparted millions of years ago to the Sun God, from whom the instructions of Bhagavad Gita have come down to the earthly kingdom. One should, therefore, follow the path of Bhagavad Gita as it is expressed in the Gita itself and beware of self-interested people after personal aggrandizement, who deviate others from the actual path. Oh, shall I read that again? Oh yeah, this is very important. One should therefore follow the path of Bhagavad Gita as it is expressed in the Gita itself and beware of self-interested people after personal aggrandizement who deviate others from the ac actual path. 
The Lord is definitely the Supreme Person and His activities are transcendental. One who understands this is a liberated person from the very beginning of his study of Bhagavad Gita. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the fourth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of transcendental knowledge. All glories to Sri Krishna, all glories to his bestowing transcendental knowledge in, uh, on Arjuna and reconnecting the disciplic succession so that we too can stand up and fight for Krishna. Fight against Maya, against illusion and establish Krishna and service to Krishna as the goal of life. Hare Krishna. Oh, what a chapter. Okay, we'll stop there and give the devotees a chance to catch their breath and these wonderful verses and take time to reflect on points that stood out in their minds. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. First is from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Gopakanya Devi Dasi, first up the blocks, a lot. Eager. Jai Maharaj, Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace, Hare Krishna. From Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Hare Bhola Ananda Murti. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Jai Nanda Murti, and we hope you are going out and distributing books. Hari Bol. This Gita. She's mainly distributing this Gita. From Deva Dharana. Haribo Devadarana, Haribo. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to His Divine Grace. I am so happy to hear you again. Thank you, good soul. Hare Krishna. I'm just the peon trying to deliver the mail without, without opening it before I deliver it or changing taking anything out or putting anything in. Hare Krishna. Anyway, that's my goal. And from Sudevi Dasi. Hare Bhava Sudevi Dasi. <coughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for caring. Krishna is so merciful. One small step we make and he pours even more mercy our way. Yes, very wonderful point. When will it truly sink in with me that I am always loved no matter what? Yes, well, that's, that's very difficult to do in this material world because the whole material world is set up to function just in the opposite way. Hare Krishna. So the fact that you can even say those words and come every night to these readings and express your appreciation, is, it means a lot, actually means a lot please don't take that for granted I'll keep reminding you just in case you forget <laughs> yes Prabhupada is with you Krishna is with you always from Subarao Subarao Haribo Hare Krishna Maharaj Please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for reading. He has a question. Regarding verse 436, is it possible that a sinner can be situated 
from Boat of Transcendental Knowledge. Thank you. Yeah, welcome to the club. It means even though we've been sinning our whole lives, especially those of us who have been born and raised in the West in this modern age, uh, we've done so much uh, sinful activities, we can't even calculate them. And yet, when we heard Prabhupada, we heard a clarion call, and we stopped doing them. It doesn't mean that you can continue, you keep doing sinful activities again and again and again, without reining that the, the, the mind in and the senses in and gradually stopping them. But with knowledge, we are guaranteed to, have, to be able to do that. But without transcendental knowledge, you can't do it. And therefore that verse stands as it is. The secret is to keep engaged in cultivating transcendental knowledge. Understand it or not, keep yourself in front of the sound vibration so that you can be, your heart can be purified, your mind can, intelligence can be sharpened and strengthened so that you can resist the temptations of this material world. That's how transcendental knowledge relieves from a, one, one from that danger of uh, sinful activities. So yes, it is possible. And Srila Prabhupada is proving it in practical reality. This is not some philosophical speculation, armchair speculators you know, with a big book in front of them being bookworms. This is about pr practical, uh, transcendental life. Hearing, inquiring, serving, and accepting the truth as it is. That, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and, uh, and that I am His eternal servant. Just that knowledge alone will free one from uh, the bondage of sinful activities. Hare Krishna. But that point that is made at the end, if one doubts that, if you, if you are persistently doubtful in the truth of that statement, then you'll have to go back. And then eventually you'll come back to Krishna consciousness, but those who are con constantly doubtful, they live in misery and they cannot keep up their Krishna consciousness. Therefore, faith is extremely important. Adao, Shadha. In the beginning, there must be faith. And we follow and hear and listen and try to understand and submit ourselves to our the instructions from Krishna through the Bhagavad Gita as it is and to Prabhupada and our spiritual masters and senior um, leaders. And we become happy in Krishna consciousness. Because Krishna consciousness, as we heard before, is a self-manifested, peaceful condition which is only possible to attain in relationship with Krishna. So as long as we keep ourselves aloof from our relationship with Krishna, then we can't attain that blissful uh, state of peacefulness, not just peacefulness, but ecstatic uh, happiness. Hare Krishna. This is from Bhakta Matsu. Hare Krishna Bhakta Matsu. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for reading, Maharaj, and saving us from dragging on of material existence. Ah, that's, you got that, that phrase right. In the purport of 434, Prabhupada states, quote, One must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master, and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with a genuine spiritual understanding, unquote. 
I was wondering what is that what is that test of the spiritual master? How can we show the guru our genuine genuine spiritual desire even if he is not personally present with us? Well, there's two ways to associate with the spiritual master. One is through Bapu or the physical presence, and the other is Suvani through the teachings or through the um, knowledge, sound vibration. So one has to serve the sound vibration, one has to serve the instructions of the spiritual master by following his instructions. And, and the test comes, they always come, uh, they are presented to us by the material nature. And sometimes they're given to us by the spiritual master when he gives us a duty to perform, which is not easy to do, but it's something that needs to be done. And when that is done regularly and, and systematically and uh, without, without fail, then one rises above the modes of nature by that passing of the test. Now, another, there's another sentence that goes with it that you have to understand in order to fully uh, comprehend what, you're, what we're talking about. And that is, if you remember, or if you look back at the book, he also says, you, you, have, to get a, you have to get the proper understanding from him. It means, if you don't understand something, then you have to be really honest with yourself. And, and admit that you don't understand, and then inquire. And if you don't understand still, then inquire again. And if you don't understand still, then inquire again. Th when you pass the test, you will get the understanding. The understanding will come to you from within your heart and from the instruction of the spiritual master. So it means that you shouldn't let anything go in your ear from the spiritual master and from the scriptures that you don't understand. You have to inquire about what you don't understand. If you think that you understand and you don't actually understand, that's a little difficult position. But therefore, there has to be uh, exchanges, there have to be questions and answers, until the, cl the subject matter becomes clear. And that's what the end of this chapter says. Slash the doubts which have entered into your mind by transcendental knowledge. And then stand up and fight maya. Do not succumb to the temptations of maya to, to think that we're something special or that we think we are powerful or whatever. We're all very tiny, infinitesimal sparks of spirit in this huge universe, you know, wandering around trying to enjoy and control and own Krishna's energies. Nothing belongs to us. This is a test. We have all these things. See this altar is so beautiful with all the beautiful colors and photos and in this case butterflies <laughs> we like butterflies so does Krishna like butterflies you know with fragrance flowers but it's not ours the computers we use to broadcast this all over the world but it's not ours nothing belongs to us so we should become uh, free from the feelings of possessiveness and use everything at our disposal uh, in the service to satisfy Krishna, to please Krishna, to spread Krishna consciousness to others who are less fortunate. And by doing that from within the Chaitya Guru and without the external manifestation of the Guru and the Shastras and the devotion of the devotional community of Vaishnavas, uh, we will understand Hare Krishna.
Daityari Hari Das. Daityari Hari Das Jai. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you again for reading tonight. I really liked text 39. It's almost like a sutra containing the essentials of achieving success in Krishna consciousness. Mm. That it is. It is a sutra. Should we hear it again? Because you pointed it out. Let's hear it again. 39. Shadhava labate jnanam tatpara samyatendriyaha jnanam labdva param shantim ajadenadi gachtate. A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. So what does that mean? Subdues his senses means uh, he does things that he wouldn't ordinarily do uh, because he's asked by Krishna to do it. And he refrains from doing things that we ordinarily do because Krishna asks us, asks, asks us not to do it. <laughs> and that's freedom. In another verse we already heard earlier, Ragadvecha de Muktaistu, Vishyan Indriyashiran, Atma Vashar, Vidayatma, Prasadam, Arigachtati. That if we can come to the point of um, free from desire uh, and aversion and follow the regulative principles of freedom, we can attain the complete mercy of Krishna. Hare Krishna. Next is from Bhakta Rupa. Haribo Bhakta Rupa. Thank you for reading this evening, Maharaj. What a nice thing to hear Bhagavad Gita with you. So nice, so nice. Hearing about the importance of transcendental knowledge. A few things from different purports stood out. Ignorance is the cause of sinful life, and sinful life is the cause of one's dragging on a material life. <laughs> there you go. Prabhupada goes on to say that human life is the loophole for getting out. Mm. Ignorance can be removed by gradual acceptance of the principles of Krishna consciousness. Liked that the process is described as gradual. Also stood out that hearing submissively and rendering service are the keys to receiving transcendental knowledge. Sorry for the hodgepodge of reflections. Thank you again. Hare Krishna, thanks. Those are a hodgepodge. That's a well-prepared meal. <laughs> Spiced just right. Delightful. Thank you very much. More from Daityari Haridas. Mm. I also wanted to ask on the point of sacrifice of possessions without knowledge having no spiritual benefit. How does that apply to Agata Sukriti? When people give us donations on Sankirtan without any knowledge or understanding of the significance of what they're doing. How also does it apply to us when we do something pleasing to the spiritual master without understanding the significance? Because Krishna is there. He's there in your heart. He's there in everyone's heart. And he knows exactly what everyone is doing at every moment, what they've done in the past, and what they're going to do in the future. Therefore, even though you may not know it, you may not remember it, Krishna does. It's like when you were a child, a little baby, you slipped and fell on your head 
and you got a little scar or something like that. You don't remember what happened, but your mom can tell you, how, mom, how would I get this? And you fell on a banana peel and landed on a brick, and therefore you have this scar. Oh, I see. This is the way you get knowledge uh, that you can't remember. We get it from the super soul. We get it from those persons who can remember. Hare Krishna. Next is from Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Who? Anandamurti. Anandamurti, Hari Bol. Jai, thank you so much for reading today. Yesterday I have distributed three Bhagavad Gita, three Srila Prabhupada, three Srimad Bhagavatam first canto, three Krishna books, third canto, during my lunchtime, 30 minutes. Oh, this is fantastic news. This is, this is in between while you're working. I want you to point out to all the devotees who are listening that Anandamurti has a full-time job and she's still distributing books every day. Note, take note. It can be done. When I am distributing books on the street, some give donation without receiving books. Some take, take books without donations. Some just receive the books and donate immediately and go. Every person does yagya according to their capacity, as written in the purport of this last verse of the fourth chapter. Bhagavad Gita. Yes, exactly. And that's how to realize this knowledge. I'll go back to Matsu. This is how you knowledge, this is how you t get the test. You go out and distribute these books. Somehow or other convince people to take these books and then the knowledge will come uh, from within your heart, from the pleasure of the spiritual master and Krishna. Hare Krishna. From Gauranga Gopal. Who? Goranga Gopal. Goranga Gopal. Hari Bol. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada. In verse 36, Krishna says, quote, Even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners, when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. In the light of this verse, today I read in Chaitanya Charitamrita about Lord Chaitanya mysteriously acting for the deliverance of Gopinath Patanayaka. As it is often mentioned, the activities of the Lord are inconceivable. I was wondering how to understand this pastime, as it seemed that Gopinath, who is so dear to the Lord, was still performing sinful activities. Does this verse from Bhagavad Gita apply in that context? Thank you very much. Well, these are eternal associates of Krishna. So that it applies in the sense that it's showing us examples, you know, of, of how powerful the Lord's mercy is. I mean, the Lord is acting in the Lord, form of Lord Chaitanya. He's acting as a sannyasi. And not just as an ordinary sannyasi, but he's setting an example so high and so strong and pure because there were so many people who were not following, you know, the strict rules of a sannyas in those days. Uh, and so he wanted to set the proper example for all time, what the proper standard of sannyas is. And it's not the business of the sannyasi to get involved in... Uh, people's material affairs. Therefore, he pretended not to get into the material affairs and was critical of the devotees who tried to uh, get him to help Gopinath Padanayaka. But the mystery is, from within the heart of Maharaj Pratyaparudra and the devotees and Gopinath Padanayaka himself, he actually... Uh, got the thing done even without doing anything himself physically <clears throat> and it turns out that the family of Bhavananda Roy of whom Ramananda Roy was one the sons 
in Gopinath Patnaik, in Bandinath Roy, and the others, um, they were all very dear to uh, Maharaj Pratyabhrudra. They were so dear to him, they were like family. You know, sometimes you have a family member, have a son, and he does some nonsense, and you just say, ah, it's, it's my son, and he doesn't... Uh, so it was a misunderstanding. The fact that he was put up on the chunga to, to get killed for you know a small amount of money uh, was a misunderstanding. The prince was a son of the king, and he treated him kind of disrespectfully, Gopinath Patanayaka, and therefore he got severely tested. But then when he was asked, what were you doing when you were in the chunga? I was praying to Lord, Lord Chaitanya to please make me his eternal servant. Hare Krishna. You have to put all the details together and come up with the right picture. Hare Krishna. I'm from Subha Rao. Subha Rao, Hare Bo. He says, thank you, Maharaj, for your delineation. Hare Krishna. All glories to Bhagavad Gita as it is. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Samabeda Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai. Gora Prema Nandi. Hari Hari Bo. Thanks very much. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic as Krishna continues to enlighten Arjuna and all of us, the whole universe, through this Bhagavad Gita and Prabhupada's purports as they are. See you tomorrow night. Hare Krishna.